Welcome to Just Another Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Today is Hoppy Hour, which is a podcast we talk about beer. Uh, I welcome back uh, from Deer Go Draft Services, Adam Morissette, to talk Christmas beers. Uh, what beer to drink during the Christmas season, what beer to drink on Christmas Day. Um, it's a fun talk about beer. Um, Adam and I catch up a little bit, too. We talk a little Mandalorian well, nerding out there a little bit too, but uh, mostly talk about beer and what to drink this holiday season. I really appreciate everybody listening in. This is the last episode of 2020. I really, 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 really appreciate everybody coming on and listening to the podcast this year. Uh, look forward to cool new things happening in 2021 uh, and season three launching in January. I really appreciate it. This is Hoppy Hour with Adam Morissette and myself. Enjoy everybody. Merry Christmas. Welcome to just another podcast. Hey, Adam, how are you? Good. What's up, man? I'm drinking a beer. I mean, nice. can't get better than that. So this oh, is my. Yeah. Start, I'll just start it off right now. This is my Christmas beer, Celebration Ale from Sierra Nevada. I'll drink this all the time, all winter. Um, but we'll talk other beer too. But I'll, I'll I'll say right now that the answer to every question is Celebration Ale. Oh yeah, Celebrations, good stuff. I have a uh, Founders KBS Mackinac Fudge. You went right for it, actually. <laughs> it's a, it's a light eleven percent. Yeah, see, it's not bad nowadays. It's not bad at all. No, I mean, it's less than a glass of wine. Mm-hmm. So let me fix. Can I fix this? So we're in a new. As you can see, Adam and I talked a little while ago about how we're in a new. I'm in a new little setup here. I am having a baby, so we made the studio into a um, baby room, and so now I'm in the bedroom with a nice white screen behind me. So. Again, I feel like Edward Snowden. You don't know where I am. But Adam's with a world map behind him. Yeah, yeah. I made a little corner here because I was starting to feel jealous of your little podcasting spot. And then when you logged on, you had a white screen behind you. I, was like, I tried to do the virtual background thing. The virtual background thing looks ridiculous. Hold on, let me just throw one of these. Anybody who's watching, let's just show one of these. I put this Christmas one. That's pretty it's fantastic. It is, but like when you turn, oh, I guess it's not bad right now. What, what, what made me go is when you put the beer up. Yeah, yeah, it starts glitching. Yep. So that's where it is. So this is not bad. This is someone's house or something. I don't know. I looked. I googled virtual backgrounds. I could be in. Ooh. I can be in the grass for some reason, or in space. They even got the northern favorite, lights behind my me. My favorite background right now is the uh, Four Seasons Total Landscaping <laughs> background. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get this off of here before I forget, because this is, looks ridiculous. Virtual background, none. There we go. Okay, so beer. So Adam is on here to talk beer again, because uh, we like beer. Uh, if you see me looking up, Adam, I have a big monitor on my, my wall now, or it's my TV, and I'm looking at my notes. It's just, there. it's really high right now, so. <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah, so we talked Thanksgiving beers. We talked um, what to drink all day because it's a long day. I feel like Christmas is slightly different. Uh, whereas like in the morning you might have like a mimosa or yeah. something, you know, with your breakfast because you're tra more people. I feel like travel, they go from place to place to place on Christmas day. Hopefully not this year. People are staying put again. Um, but I think it's a little different in my opinion. I feel like it's not that drink all day in one spot kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. Are you, are you in agreement with that? Or are you, yeah, I think the, hey, I, I think the food's different for a lot of people too. I mean, tur or, uh, Thanksgiving is just so like classic on its food, but a lot of people have different things they do on Christmas. So that makes the, what you're going to drink situation a little different. Yeah. But. Um, I know this year, again, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> this is the same. This is a repeat of Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, but we ordered uh, gold belly. I don't know if you've heard of gold belly. It's, you can order like restaurant food from all over the country and it's frozen. Oh, nice. Uh, I learned about it during, uh, the pandemic and stay at home orders back in March, April, we watched a bunch of um, one bite pizza reviews from uh, Barstool sports. And oh, yeah. they, like some of the pizza restaurants that he's reviewed has, uh, we'll call, went, we'll All right, <laughs> went, we're on there. So like Cape Cod pizza down in Massachusetts was part of the, you know, uh, gold belly. So we ordered that. So we have pizza from Massachusetts. We're going to eat on Christmas day. So nice. what goes better with, Excuse me, what goes better with pizza but beer? So that works for us. But yeah, you're right. Different meals. 
turkey. Some people have ham. I know a lot of people who eat Chinese food. It's just the tradition. They, they just don't yep. want to cook and it's easy meal. You know, Chinese food restaurants are mostly open on Thanksgiving or on Christmas day. Um, but if, if we'll talk some all around beers though. So let me get me started. I'll give you some of my ideas that I had written down. Um, that I will drink all day. And those are the, I'm going to start with that. Whereas like, I know for Thanksgiving, we talked about like what you start with the next meal and, and so on. We can get that if you want to, but I feel like, like I mentioned, Sierra Nevada celebration ale would be one of those. Um, the other one um, is um, the, it's like a Scotch style ale from um, Bell's, the Christmas ale from Bell's out of, yeah. uh, was that uh, Midwest? Yep. Um, place. I feel like it's another one that I can just drink can just can continually there. They are higher ABV for some of these, but it's just, I don't know, something about Christmas screams spices and you need to have that in it. Uh, as well as I feel like something about Christmas at time, Scotch ales really do something for me. Um, so I oh, think yeah. 20, or, uh, sorry, uh, Bell's Christmas ale uh, was one of those beers that I'd like to drink multiple times um, on Christmas day or Christmas Eve. I also feel like a difference, Adam, Christmas is more like a time Whereas Thanksgiving's a day, if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. So like, I think when we talked Thanksgiving, it was like, we talked a specific day, but there's like wrapping presents prior to Christmas. There's right. Christmas Eve. There's the day after Christmas. There's New Year's. Yeah. So I feel like this, this whole season of Christmas is where you really yeah. want to talk about these beers. Today we've got so. the winter solstice. Another good uh, reason. Wet. And I almost wore it. I forgot to put it on because this was releasing on Wednesday, the uh, 23rd. We have Festivus. Oh, Nice. So we got that. We got Hanukkah. You get all kinds of holidays that happen around this time. It's not just one specific day. So true. I mean, like you were talking about the KBS. That's a great beer to drink when you're wrapping presents on the 21st, 22nd, trying to get stuff done. Because <laughs> you like, want to feel that nice little 11%. Uh, but, but Christmas morning, you're not cracking into a KBS. What, other, what else would you cr crack into the earliest time in, in Christmas Day? Oh, man. Well, celebration's a good one. I mean, it's what, 7%? Six eight, yeah. So it's just just below eight, seven. So, um, so I mean, that's not terrible if you don't go crazy on it. I would do something like that's nice in the early day. It's not heavy and real sweet. And um, I really like. And I don't think we. This is from when I was in Illinois. Um, Revolution Brewing in Chicago. Um, they make Fistmas, which is also a, a an IPA. Um, and but it it is spiced which is kind of interesting for, and I can't remember what spices they use, but that's a really nice beer. If I could get a hold of that, I would drink some. Um, but yeah, no, it's hard too, because all the, the Christmas ales are all higher ABV and it's kind of like what defines them. So for Christmas day, yeah, I mean, like I said, joking about on Thanksgiving, like I'm, I'm more than willing to bust open an 11% beer at nine o'clock in the morning, but uh, then I got to take it easy for a while. And I feel like Christmas is hard too, because it's like, the it's like the holiday so like there's also wine involved and there might be some cognac involved and so at some point it's like i gotta i gotta figure out what i how i'm gonna pace myself um but it's no i think i mean there's all kinds of different things you want to drink on things or christmas day or christmas time i should say yep. um when i was working at in illinois the bar i worked at did a 12 beers of christmas fundraiser every year and they would just set up booths and you would go around with your tickets and try different beers so I always had some good ones there and same thing like the, the big joke was always like even doing like a three ounce pour like you would get hammered by the end of it because half of them are like 12 percent alcohol um because I'd say like some of the ones I love like uh one of my all-time favorites is St. Bernardus Christmas sale the Belgian spiced um quadruple I think um but a uh, god like it's a giant bottle and it's 12 percent alcohol like i bust one of those open and I'm, I'm making a big decision for the day. So exactly. We, uh, the one thing I will say, and I just thought about it now after I was, you were talking was Christmas day is a different day. Like we talked about than, than, than Thanksgiving. I remember for the past four years, I've gone to nocturnum on Christmas day. And I just now realizing that that won't happen because of the, the, the pandemic. Excuse me. And I remember what's the uh, Sam Adams beer that comes in. It's like really, really expensive. It comes out like it's got that weird shaped. Um, it's like in a, almost like a, it's like a purplish. I, yep. You know, it, it's in that weird bottle, Utopia. Uh, or Utopia. Is it Utopia? The, yeah. yeah. Last year, uh, uh, we, we, my friend, my best man, Mike, and my best friend and I, we all split up. Like, we, like, a couple of us put the money in towards it. Or he may have actually purchased it as a gift. And we all took, you know, this tiny yep. little sip of it. Because it was, that's what it was. It was like you bought, like, a, it's like a six-ounce pour for, like, 
27 dollars or something like that yeah. so we all took yeah. like the smallest little thing we may have even shared a glass which is crazy to think about I know, in this nuts? right now <laughs> but uh yeah that was like a cool thing but that also made me think about what i do on, th- on christmas day because every year at christmas day for six years or four years i mean we at six o'clock we meet up at nocturnum so it was like we got to pace ourselves because we got to get to the restaurant and eat and have dinner yep. and stuff like that there um but yeah so yeah crazy cool end of the year things is what i'm looking for um the utopia never tried it won't try it again probably not no offense to sam adams no offense to beer not worth 27 dollars for that much of beer i just might as well just buy a shot or some sort of cool cognac or something like that because it wasn't it's fun but i don't ever foresee myself needing to get it again (laughs) uh i wanted to pull up also is that um I used to drink a lot when I first got into craft beer, 21st Amendment. Oh, my God. I love 21st Amendment. Because I feel like it was easy yeah. to get at gas stations and different places like that in New England. It was like, that was a cool, and their, their artwork looked craft. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So it had that aspect of, oh, I'm not buying Bud Light, Budweiser. I can buy this cool beer. And uh, Men's Health Magazine rated their Christmas beer, uh, or the Fireside Chat, as the number Fireside one. Chat, yeah. Christmas, yeah. Fireside Chat is amazing. That was one of I was at, when we talked about Thanksgiving beers. Um, I was talking about Monk's Blood as yep. one of my dessert beers. But yeah, no, Twenty First Amendment is consistently one of my favorite breweries. They just do fun stuff. Um, back in Black IPA, that was one yes. of my go tos for a while. They have, uh, literally, I don't think I've ever had a beer from them that I didn't like, and I, I think it's. I think the name also has something to say about it too. The the cool name, and again, the can artwork. If anybody has a chance to look it up. 21st Amendment has some pretty good, you know, artistic cans uh, that eye catching that would like for me as a designer too. like, yep. that's what you'd buy, you know, and our friend Andy, same thing, a can design, like you, that's what you buy based on looks, not always yep. on taste. Uh, and I've gotten screwed a couple of times recently with that. I bought some really cool looking cans that turned out to be not that great. Oh, yeah. Liquid inside. Um, well, that's the thing. It, and that's what I've found. It's, it's always either the brewery is just all around solid. And so like they put as much time and effort into their label designs as they do their beer, like, or the only thing they put time into is their label designs. And Mm -hmm. there's like, there's nothing in between. It's like in the middle, you find just solid beers with simple labels, but I find, yeah, I'm like you, it's like, that's a total 50, 50, like killer label, terrible beer or best beer you've ever had. Like, it's 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 just crazy <laughs> nowadays and it's like if you're a big brewery you should i mean you're gonna have cans that are like, cans or bottles that are um good looking in the, in a sense but it's just it is one of those weird things nowadays that people really put all their effort into i mean there's some breweries across new england that make really okay liquid but have excellent labels like literally labels where i look at it i'm like I'm all, oh my god i'm gonna buy that and then i'm like i read the brewery and i'm like oh, had that before yeah, fell yeah. for that before not taking yep. that uh but the other thing i just realized when i was looking at this list is a lot of christmas beers are your traditional like good christmas beers are your traditional old school original craft breweries or breweries that came out in bottles absolutely like, not even like your 500 milliliter bottles or your special edition bottles you're talking your your, six, your 12 ounce bottles like i'm yeah. looking at mad elf from trogues yep. again um, bottles. probably one of my, cans, but yeah yeah probably one of my all-time favorite christmas beers is um anchor mm-hmm. christmas sale and same thing that you said, they made, I was reading today when I was looking some stuff for this, but uh, the Anchor Brewing Company brewed that for the first time and bottled it in 1975. Jesus, and, wow. and, they, and they tweak the recipe every year. It's never exactly the same. And they've never released any of the recipes for any of the years they've done. So that one's always, and I've never been disappointed. I, it's always one of my absolute favorites every year. On menshealth.com, uh, their number four is Anchor Christmas Ale. And the things they say is like, it's cool. It depends on the year. Your flavors range from cherries to black licorice to Irish coffee. Yeah. And you just yep. don't know until you open it. It's pretty badass. Yeah. Like that's, uh, that's, yeah. And they but don't, just, and they don't tell you what's in it. So it's no. like, it's not like a, this tastes great because we put these adjuncts in it. It's just, you just drink it and you like it, which I think is kind of fun. I mean, yeah. If you look at this list here, men's health list. Okay. So you have number one is uh, 21st amendment. Like I said, that's a can. That's always been a can. They haven't been a yep. bottle brewery. Uh, Rogue's uh, CNS Private Reserve was number two, and that's in a bigger bottle. I don't know what the size of it is, but it's in one of the. It's in a bottle like um, Anchor, which is yes. not your traditional twelve ounce bottle. Uh, you have Trogues, Matt, the Mad Elf. They actually put that out in five hundred mil. Or, uh, sorry, um, Magnum bottles at one year. Like like 
you're talking these massive magnum yep. bottles that are like 11 percent alcohol it's like that's a share of a bottle for sure <laughs> uh anchors christmas ale like you mentioned uh saint uh bernardus christmas ale oh, bottle. That's one of my favorites. uh number six is deschutes brewing uh jubilee bottle <laughs> and then there's avery's brewing old Jub- jubilation which is yep. a can uh boulevard brewing company snow and towel number eight bottle <laughs> brooklyn winter ale <laughs> Number nine, bottle. And number 10 is Bell's Christmas Ale, bottle. Yep. It's, just, it's crazy how the, the, the style, we, we, the beers we talked about on Thanksgiving, a lot of them like came in bottles, but nowadays of the tradition going to uh, more can related, uh, it's just interesting to see your winter ales coming in, most of those breweries that are bottle related, um, which is kind of cool. Not that that means anything. It really no. has no idea. It's just a fun fact that I noticed when I was looking at this list. <laughs> but um, speaking of, uh, which one was it that I was actually looking at here? So prepared for this. Uh, Mad Elf was one of those ones that I continuously went back to when I was living in Massachusetts, really getting into brewery, uh, that made me go into a lot of their other beer. Uh, yeah. Trogues as a company, Mad Elf made me try all of their other See, and that, that And Mad Elf is one of the ones on there I had never had. Oh, really? Yeah. The Mad Elf, it's, it's, it, here's the deal. So that's the other thing about this. We talked about that list. Every single one of those, my, I and mean, there's Sierra Nevada's not on it. Every one of those is spice, like Spice Dale, or, you know, those, it's one of those weird things that people want that for this season. Uh, Mad Elf, to me, when I re- first tried it, is very, very um, alcohol heavy. Like it's 11% and it tastes 11%. Yep. A lot of good breweries nowadays are able to make those 10, 11% beers. They're just like, oh, crap, this is 10, 11%. Excuse me, Mad Elf was when I first tried it, I was like, this is boozy. Yep. This is definitely a boozy beer. Um, but it also came in a 12 ounce bottle, which is different than your 16 ounce can, obviously. So you have four ounces left to, to consume. Um, but yeah, so Mad Elf, the Mad Elf, yeah, wow, you haven't tried that one yet, huh? I know. Now I feel yeah, like we, you and I need to buy a Magnum bottle of it and just drink it we together. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I know. And that one pops up all the time on lists. And that one always is one of the ones I want to try it. I've never had. Um, I, another one I really I don't know if they I don't know if it's seasonal anymore it used to be was the stone chocoveza um I don't, it's still yeah. it still might be their their winter seasonal um but I always thought that was a really nice kind of different holiday like we said not necessarily Christmas spice but just holiday that like kind of just warm hot chocolate sweet stout like oh it's it's a good one it brings me into, um, uh, you know, where this is a little bit more all over the place like it was for the Thanksgiving one. But I feel like, again, it's a whole, whole season and we really just want to talk beers that you can drink during this season. Yep. Um, but it brings me to beer that we made at Orno Brewing Company this year, again, for the first time in many years, is uh, Mexican Blackbird. Um, Mexican Blackbird Stout is definitely a beer that I would consider sure, coming absolutely. out. This, this, this is a great winter beer, great beer to drink during Christmas season. Uh, it's ten percent. It's got that spicy, uh, like you know, uh, Mexican hot chocolate feel yep. to it. Uh, it's very easy to drink. And um, Brian Keezer from Unrest Coffee, who's the coffee that we put in the beer, mm-hmm. stopped by today because he hadn't picked his because of the you know pandemic and stuff like that. He hadn't picked up his beer that we usually give to the people who collaborate with us. Sure. And uh, he swung by today, quick, grabbed a couple of bottles to drink on Christmas Day, and I was like, exactly, that's a great beer to drink on Christmas Day if you're not looking to um crack into a whole four pack or a six pack you just want to open a bottle split it between a couple of people that's a great beer to do that with but um uh the, the, the spicy or uh cool stouts is not something like we talked about i mean stouts is not on this list how many christmas stouts are there right when that's what's interesting i mean you see i mean like chocoveza would be one of the only ones i can really that pops up a lot um a lot like you said now the big thing now is a lot of the like the jubilation and fistmas and celebration kind of ales that get away from that really kind of heavy darker beer which is i think good because that can get a little old after an entire season of it like i said i know i always bring up the belgian beers but belgian beers are always super fun at christmas time because they do you know saint bernard is a delirium noel is one yeah. another thing that i love at christmas um it's interesting you, we talked about that as i say that though I, I i'm on my google machine here uh and beer the beer connoisseur as i look at it they're they're number one through four ish you have your uh, uh hardywood gingerbread stout 
I wonder why there's not there's that spice in it because yeah. of gingerbread. Why there's not more gingerbread stouts that are on these lists or, or yeah. brewers that yeah. are making? Especially because like it's, Thanksgiving, you get the like the pumpkin stouts like crazy, and the pumpkin ales. I mean, not even yeah. I mean not just not stouts, pumpkin beers, all kinds of pumpkin ales. Um, so. Yeah, so it is interesting. You would think like gingerbread, well, gingerbread spice would probably be the like the one I would think would be the go-to also. Um, and and they have uh, Prairie Prairie Brewing has a stout spice with cinnamon. Yeah. So it is interesting to see that you wouldn't. Uh, there isn't more of that on these lists of people beers. Uh, they have also have Mad Elf on here, Jubilation, um, but. Can people drink I, New England style IPAs on Christmas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's back to what we talked about on Thanksgiving, which was drink what you want. Right. There's yep. no rules to what you can drink and what you can't drink. Um, this I mean, is where I it comes some odd reason, have a whole flat of Corona Premier in the fridge. So, like, I might, I probably will drink some of that on Christmas because it's like 3% alcohol. So, but there's also the idea that like this drink something special is that that it doesn't have to be a Christmas special. No. It could just be special. And that was the whole thing. Uh, Mark, one of the owners or owner of a brewing company had to do, his mom had surgery down in the Freeport area. And so he was down that area taking care of her. And while he was down there, he's like, hey, I'll swing by main beer company. So I got their bar, uh, black barn project 17. I think it is. It's a double IPA. I'm waiting. And he just, yep. he just brought it to me last Friday or Thursday. That's what I'm going to drink on Christmas Day because it's something that I haven't had. Yeah. It's something special, something you can only get at the brewery. So it still makes it that special kind of like, you know, Christmas Day thing. On uh, Thanksgiving, I drank not a lot because it was just home. My wife is pregnant, so I didn't want to like – she couldn't drink, so we didn't want to do that. So I drank uh, Everlasting Farm. Again, something with a wax top on it. I was able to pull off and, and, yep. and make it special, pour it into a nice glass, a nice sifter, and, and, and take my time with it. Um, so what I would likely do on a day like Christmas is drink your Corona all day and then have that special beer with yep. dinner or dessert. Uh, yep. But also Christmas Eve, the nights leading up to Christmas where you're wrapping your last minute gifts. That's when I'm having my high ABV. This is, that's why sure. maybe gri- Christmas beers are so high ABV is because we drink them not just on one day. We drink them from December 1st all the way to the end of the yep. new year. Um, that's probably where they came from. Not, not really, but like that's why why every like why the lists have so many eleven percent beers on them. Right. Uh, it's because we don't drink them all in one day, or not all of us. <laughs> some and of us do. But and that's why, like, I mean, I always bring bring up one of like I said, Belgians are one of my favorite. But I don't get them a lot because they're really, especially the harder to find bigger bottles of Belgian beer are pricey. And I mean, like for I mean Saint Bernard is Christmas, right? I mean, I it's one of my favorite Christmas beers, but it's not cheap. So. You know, that's one that I would say for Christmas Day. But like you said, it doesn't even have to be like there's a whole bunch of Belgian beers that I'm not going to buy for like a random Tuesday night in the middle of the year because it, you know, it's going to be twenty two dollars a bottle. But well, twenty twenty maybe, but yeah, well, yeah exactly. <laughs> but yes, yeah, yeah, I know. Is you're it still twenty twenty? Yeah, it's crazy because we just had a meeting at a, a conference call at OBC. Uh, today with someone talking about 2021 and I was just like it does 2021 seems like it's gonna be a long year too I, I it, it it's just seems it's year. not perfect it's not nope. I mean hopefully by March or April things will get back to what it was like this summer where it was like even the cases are down and exactly. OBC for example could have some outdoor seating and things can roll a little bit easier yes. um, but at least till March it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hell and I feel like this is the time to hunker down and drink your 11 percent uh, yep. beers and just stay home and, and enjoy the, the warm weather or warm household in the cold weather in Maine uh, because ugh, god things I mean literally since the last time we talked things have gotten far worse <laughs> far worse when you and I were you know as we've said before you and I are, are friends and so we, we chat outside of the podcast and I was telling you like right in the middle of all of this our basement flooded <laughs> and completely destroyed our gas furnace which we just got less than a year ago so we had to get a whole new furnace put in and now we're having to have a sunk pump dug in the basement to take care of that. And meanwhile, like you said, it's all, I can't leave this house. No. So like all those days there's workmen downstairs, like, you know, I mean, God bless them for being able to come out and, and fix it. But like, I'm just stuck upstairs in the living room with them banging away down in the basement. I know. And I just, this moment. So I'm like, what else can happen this year? And we, so the, the heat went out, we were out for a week and a half 
So we had to use a kerosene heater to heat the house. So like, we're just getting the smell of kerosene out of the house now. But yeah, so I'm just like, 2020 is just like piling this shit on. That's why we need 20.20% alcohol <laughs> ABV beer to come out at the end of the year, you know. But yes. like, it's, 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 and this thing is, you also get a week between these two years. So like, you're talking about like celebrating with one of these things. It's you're going to celebrate the end of, the, I'm this year on the 31st of December celebrating the end of 2020. But for oh, God, me, yeah. there's a mixture of shitty 2020 and good 2020. I got married and I <laughs> found out that I was having a baby. So there's two great things that happened to me. But the majority of 2020 sucked. Yep. The majority of 2020 was a very frustrating year. So 2020 is not this end of the year like, oh, God. It's going to be a celebration. So, again, a week from Christmas, which is always pretty cool about New Year's, and New Year's Eve and Christmas, is that they're basically a week apart from each other. I might crack into a different one of those specialty yep. beers uh, and, and toast them. I mean, this year would be cool because anniversary of OBC is always on the 31st of December. This year I'll be at home. <laughs> I'll be able to sit with my wife on the couch yep. and watch the ball drop or whatever, however they're going to do it this year. Uh, enjoy yeah, something. It's going to be like. Uh, uh, maybe they're actually going to watch someone's balls drop. I don't know. I'm just going to sit at we'll home see. and watch my balls drop. <laughs> exactly. Finally, right? Uh, <laughs> About time. Well, took 40 what years. I found, what I did find out during this from 2020 is that there is such thing as playing too many video games. Like, I didn't think that growing up all my entire life was like, oh, I could just play more and more and more and more. I'm in my mid thirties now. And I realized there is a time where it's like, okay, you got to press pause and do something else. Cause this is too much. I can't like, there is such thing as too much. And there's too much th screen time. I think that uh, Caleb in the kitchen mentioned it the other day. He's like, I just, I watched too much screens. And I was yep. like, wow, man, that's actually like 2020 taught me something that there's too much screen yeah. time. And it's true. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully Christmas turns into something else. I burnt myself out on video games really fast. There's no doubt about that. Um, but well, I mean, did you, I mean, so here's my question and we'll talk, obviously go back to beer, but we haven't talked in a while. So let's just chat. Um, PS4, are you getting a PS5 at some point or what? Like, what's oh, yeah. the, so, so what are you doing with your PS4 when you get a PS5? It's my question. I'm giving it to you so you can play <laughs> Spider-Man. Dude, I literally have been trying, I've, I've, I've I actually today almost thought about, cause I haven't been playing. I thought about packing it up and driving it over to your house. Cause I've got Spider-Man and Miles Morales on it. So we were like, because Taylor and I were talking, I, I went from Blu-rays, like Blu-ray discs, I collected like, I had like 700 Blu-rays, to listing them all about a month ago on eBay, and I've been selling them disc by disc, and I've sold $1,200 of discs now, uh, and I was like, oh, I have the money to buy a PS4, and then like, I, I feel like right now they're kind of at the point where they're a little too high, because everybody's trying to get as much money, because the people who are buying PS5s are trying to get as much money as they can out of them and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, and I feel like there's going to be a good time to buy one. And uh, then I remember I was talking that you almost like what, last summer, not this summer, but the summer before that or winter before that, you're like, dude, just borrow mine. I'm going away oh, yeah. for a week. Just borrow mine and play it for an entire week. And I was like, yeah, but if I did that, I'd, I'd end up having to go out and buy one because yeah. I'd be so addicted to it. Um, yeah. But because I mean. I, I thought about you when, when Miles Morales came out for PS4 and I, I played that and that was just so fantastic. I mean, it's, it's basically, it's the original game with new missions and a new character, but it works a hundred percent. Just I'm using okay with that a bunch of times. I've, I've oh, played NBA, NBA games and sports oh, yeah. games. No, I'm ready career, for a whole nother, so. like, I'll play a whole nother of the exact same thing with Gwen Stacy. I don't care. Just yes. like give me another Spider-Man and let's roll. It's um, worked for sports games for years. Why wouldn't it work for anything else? That's what I don't understand. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, that was one of the things it came out and people were like, oh, this is the exact same city. And I, like, I'm like you. I was like, that's brilliant. How much time did you spend building that city? Like, I just keep giving me new stuff. I will play that for five years. Like, well, I mean, it's uh, better than what they've done with Grand Theft Auto. Every 15 years, they come out with a new yeah. game and it's, uh, oh, look at this whole new city. It's like, yes, but I waited 15 years and played the same game for 15 yeah. years. Give me Speaking something new. Of, like, the big sadness, which I've been waiting forever for, is Cyberpunk 2077. And it is terrible on base consoles. Um, so I got the refund for it. Um, and I'll maybe revisit it later. But I don't know. I was really unhappy. I went to... Um, so I hadn't bought a video game in a while. I was just like... I was doing other things and, 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 and just whatever. 
And so, like, literally three games that I wanted to have came out within the span of two weeks of each other was the, the remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, yep. uh, NBA 2K21, which is a game that I played consist- consistently, and at the same time, the Avengers game, which was pushed back for a while, came out. I bought none of them the weeks they came out because I just lost interest. I was like, I was just done with all of them. I ended up buying Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, realized that I sucked at all of them, that I was so <laughs> used to playing the games Skate, that I couldn't play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater anymore because skate is actually more intuitive where you like actually flip the controller back and forth and it does tricks. Um, so I was screwing up. So I, whatever. Target had NBA 2K21 on clear or on sale for twenty nine ninety nine half off. So I bought it, played it. I'm thinking the pandemic had some sort of something to do with it because like when you did the my career part where like you NBA, you're becoming an NBA yep. star, there is not even close to the near as much interaction with things as the previous storylines where you'd like you talk to the media and they'd ask you right. questions. And if you answered them correctly yeah. or wrong, your fans base would go down and up. It's literally like 30 seconds at the beginning of the game where you interact with something. And then once you make the NBA, it's just like playing an NBA game. And I'm like, I want my money back. <laughs> like, this is stupid. There's no substance to the game. It's just the framework of playing in the NBA and that's it. And I was like, this is stupid. So I, 20, 20 to 20 wasn't very good for games. I don't think other than, miles morales if you think about it but yeah that was that was one of the ones that was pulled off really well like it just it worked fantastic on my base ps4 like no problem at all you can play the updated version of it on ps5 but um cyberpunk definitely was like was just such a huge disappointment um and multiple so. levels too they, they they push the game back i i don't play it i haven't played it but they push the game back the only good thing i will say about cyberpunk is a cool new run the jewel song other than that uh they they pushed it back plus they've had some sort of like pushback on from the lgbq plus community That's um awesome. there's there's a bunch okay. of things i feel like they just struck they out embargoed, completely they embargoed the reviews so that you can only play the pc version so that because they know all of these reviewers have ultra settings I mean, like just killer gaming PCs and they wouldn't let any of the reviewers even see it on the base consoles. And then when it came out, they were like, oh, because it doesn't work. Gotcha. But I mean, this is one of the, I think probably the first games I've ever seen where Microsoft, Sony and the company that made the game are now offering no question refunds. Like that's insane. Sony took it off of their store. store. You can't even buy it on their store. Yeah. So here, what's good? So we're talking. We obviously got off beer, but like, let's continue yeah. this off beer because I don't mind it. Let's get something more positive. We're gonna give you about thirty seconds of a not thirty seconds, like five seconds of a spoiler alert little thing. But we're gonna oh, talk yeah. something happy here. We, I mean, Adam knows where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, if you don't want to hear uh, mm-hmm. Star Wars Mandalorian uh, talk and you Fair are enough. a big fan of it and you haven't watched it, please turn this off. Go watch the episode that came out on Friday. Uh, the whatever day it was, the 19th, 18th, whatever day, 17th, uh, and watch it, then come back and listen. Okay, so, whoa. Whoa, I know. <laughs> like, I, I literally... went about, like, 15 other people. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so it's funny, because I'm watching the show, and I'm kind of at my laptop on my, on my thing. So when I tell, told you I sold a lot of my Blu-rays, I'm moving over to a Plex server. I, I, I have a VPN now, and I'm downloading torrents for... Uh, you know, if whether you're happy about this as people or not, I think I had purchased all these movies at one point, so I get the get the right to download them illegally. But um, so I have a Plex server now that has like 700 movies on it. And I was kind of like trying to make sure I go through and make the covers of the Plex server movies look the way that I know what they look like, yep. and so I can access them easily. And it's kind of on the background for the beginning that the, the Mandalorian song plays. I'm like, okay, I got to get off my laptop, so I start to close it and. I'm starting to watch it, and then the, the green lightsaber comes out, and I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't believe anything with the green lightsaber because it could be anything. Someone could have found it and picked it up. The story could have been changed. Someone else could have had a green lightsaber. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I thought the face of the person was green at one point when he's coming through the, the ship. And then he pulls the hood off, and I literally was like, holy yep. shit, like out loud. Like, and Taylor's yep. like, whoa. She goes, she got excited because she just watched during the pandemic all the Star Wars with me. And she's like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then, like, he takes his helmet off and starts crying. And it's just like, oh, my God, John Favreau, I want to kiss you. <laughs> like, but it, it's, 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 this season, Ace has been watching it. This season, Asa said that he likes it better than last season. 
Taylor thinks the opposite. She thought the first couple of episodes were a little bit slower than last season. Um, but they definitely, if you didn't like this season, they redeemed the hell out of themselves yeah. with the final episode. Cause it's like, they did. And I, I think this season has been hard for people because there's so much fan service. Like if, if you didn't watch clone wars and keep up with kind of that, that period in between the movies, a lot of this, like, you know, I mean, the episode with like Ahsoka and um, over some of the other, what's, I can't remember her name, the Mandalorian. Yes. Boat, I know who you're talking about, but it's hard. Boat, There's so many gun. new people in this season yeah. that, uh, yeah, yes, yes. And, and those are all in Clone Wars. So like, if you watched Clone Wars, those things, those are the same kind of moments as like the Luke Skywalker where you're like, wah! But that was the same thing with Annie. It was like, she was like, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, for like the big Star Wars nerds though, like they're all having like a collective Star Wars orgasm at the moment. So um, so I think that's that's what's, I, I never thought they would just no. go that hard at Clone Wars. I think it's smart because it's this huge untapped storyline that they can play off of that has developed characters. But it's going to take a while for people to see that. Because most of the people who who are Clone Wars fans uh, or are Star or real Star Wars fans know that Clone Wars is such a great storyline. They're kind of sad that it actually wasn't made into like they're not like part of the huge storyline. Like yeah. the Clone Wars animated show was so good that they're like that sucks that it was this cool off brand not off brand but off the beaten path yep. TV show that you had to like be a big fan to watch. Um, but the other part of it is like I never thought they'd bring Luke Skywalker. Like I thought they were trying to make this different than this the canon like in yeah. canon but like not part of the canon if that makes any sense and that they wouldn't bring in some they talk about darth vader they talk yeah. about luke skywalker but they wouldn't actually bring I mean, them in i think as a you know i mean as we've talked about like lifelong like more than i'd like to admit star wars nerd like my like coming like middle school through high school like i used to obsessively read the novels that are not canon anymore but that was like that was my jam and so for that i think you know, it, it's been cool to see the decisions that they they make because, like the like I'm like you, like the Luke thing. They're trying to get away from that that whole Skywalker story. But for all of the older fans that read all those novels, their first thought was probably like, "Well, wait a second. Like this is when Luke had an academy." Yes. So like, if they don't at least acknowledge that, that's going to piss off that fan base. So for me, being that the age of fan base, I was like, that's super cool. Like if that's the last time we see him, that's fine. But at least I'm like, he took him to the Jedi Academy. That's awesome. Like. And, and, and just the idea that they were able to bring in like someone like Taylor, who's a very fringe star Wars fan. Like she's a huge Mandalorian fan. She's like, Oh, I could take the movies. I could take it or leave it. But like, it's, it's the Mandalorian is one like, Oh, it's Friday. Let's watch the Mandalorian. Yep. It's been able to pull and connect the two storylines together and make the fans like go, okay, Luke Skywalker. And they did an okay job. I mean, if you look at the, if you stare and watch that over again and look at Luke Skywalker, yep. he's not really there. Like that, that, that it, it, technology is great nowadays, but there is a, there is a sense of that's obviously CGI'd in there. Yep. It's obviously younger eyes version of, um, you know, what's his face? I can't, I just blanked his name. What's his name? Mark the actor. Hamill. Mark Hamill, which is awesome because if you watch like that night, we watched it. It crashed Disney Plus's servers, by the way. Oh, I bet. That's, that's massive compared to what they probably have for servers nowadays um, because of how big the company, the, uh, the, the streaming yeah. service has gotten. Um, that at midnight Eastern, I believe it was, the servers crashed because that's nine o'clock Western or Pacific time. That's like when a lot of people are watching the show probably and it just crashed the servers. And, um, so like it's really cool to see them do these pieces that grabbed it together and and did and they, I'm ready for, we we, we talk, have to wait another year. There is season three. We have off wait another year, which is how you make a good TV show. Yeah. Um, but apparently I, we have about fourteen other Star Wars series coming in the next year, so we're fine. And for me as a Marvel fan, there's about fourteen other Marvel's TV series that are coming out, which is smart, which is funny because it makes me think that like Bob Iger and the people at Disney knew the pandemic was coming. Let's start some conspiracy theories here because a lot of their really, really, really big, cool content is coming out on Disney plus. So they didn't yep. have to wait, wait for the theaters to open back up. Like a lot of these cool things, Falcon and the winter soldier, the vision, WandaVision show, some of these star Wars TV shows are all coming directly to Disney plus. And so yep. like, to me, it was like, Hmm, weird. 
again, no actual conspiracy, but like they're actually going to be able to succeed at this because for the next at least six months, eight months, maybe a year, I'm not going to a theater likely. No. Nope. So if these shows can come out and I can sit in the comfort of my own home and drink my own beer, yep. use my own bathroom if I need to, um, pop my own popcorn, I'm going to be watching Mandalorian or the Boba Fett show or, oh, yeah. you know, any of these Marvel series. So um, well, to nerd funny, out man. on everybody for a little bit, it was unbelievable. Like I cannot oh, was, get over how awesome that was. No, and like you mentioned John Favreau and like, that was, I was watching a thing the other night. I mean, of course, like, you know, Star Wars alone, he's had this huge impact. But then he was the original Iron Man movie. And he was involved. So what was, I don't know what his role was in that. Iron Man? He was the uh, director of the first Iron Man movie. That's so what, he director. Was I didn't know if he was Iron writer or director. He but I'm Iron just saying, Man 2 as well. You go back through his list. And then last night we were watching, I never realized he directed Elf. Oh, that's what it was. There was a meme. I was, I was actually just trying to Google the meme. That's the what meme I saw. That, yeah. There was like, he created a Christmas movie that was, honestly, I will tell you right now, it's probably one, until probably Christmas Chronicle, was one of the only movies made in the past 20 years that was a Christmas movie that become a cult classic. Like, it become yeah. a classic movie. I think Christmas Chronicle is the first, number one, might become one of those 15 years from now. Yeah. But I feel like since 2003, when that Elf came out, there hasn't been this like, stereotypical yeah. great Annie and i watched big. elf last night and that was our first thing as we were saying i was like i was like first of all 2003 seems like eight thousand years ago yes but i was like that being said i was like the same thing you said i was like i can't think of anything that i mean this is up there with like the most classic christmas movies of all time and a lot of the other ones that came out that were that you think about were probably 96 97 were the latest and so that was six years later that Elf came out in 2003. Yep. So he created a cl cult classic Christmas movie. Then he came in and created Iron Man, which no one thought was going to succeed yep. because it was which Iron Man. Was the foundation for the MCU. And, and then he comes out and comes up with The Mandalorian. I will say, I think John Favreau is one of my favorite directors of all time. He has swung and missed a couple of times with the Lion King remake and the Jungle right. Book remake. But I feel like that's not his fault. Those are all remakes that he's going from animation to real life, which is yep. weird. And so... Uh, and creepy, uh, but John Favreau to this day, will, uh, to me, can do no wrong. If John Favreau's attached to a project, I feel like it's going to be a home run. And, yes. and Chef, have you ever seen Chef? I haven't. I know about it. Oh my god, it, that is a great movie for like if you want to feel like good feelings inside you, a family oriented movie. Uh, he's accident and he directs it. I believe he wrote it too. Uh, John Leguizamo's so. yeah. in it, The Pest, or AKA uh, he's also the Violator in Spawn. If anyone wants to nerd out here a little bit. Um, John Leguizamo, um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. makes a guest appearance. What's her name? Um, Modern Family, the wife of oh, uh, uh, Sophia, Sophia, um, yep. whatever her last name. I forget her last name, but she's in it. She's um, John Leguizamo's, or not John Leguizamo's, John Favreau's ex-wife in the movie. Uh, it's just a great, 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 great movie. So uh, if anybody wants to watch Chef, that's a good movie to watch. Uh, but yeah, John, John Favreau has done everything good with The Mandalorian so far. Two seasons in. Um, and we went off way off tangent because this is a beer podcast right now. Yep. Uh, but we're passionate about both of us. So we don't see each other anymore. <laughs> I was about to say, it's a podcast slash Justin and I catching up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we might as well, if we're going to talk and chat and hang out and see what's going on with each other we might as well record it and put it out exactly. on the internet because someone might like it um but yeah so adam also cleans line um yeah which is funny because now you don't have to come back for a while because we're not open inside anymore so, so like nobody is that's why so it's so, all we're all just doing our thing now and waiting until this is over oh you know i can bring it back to beer though uh because something we, we didn't talk about it on the last podcast you and i talked about it afterwards but i got it in the uh, mail was I had told you about the uh, the beer caramelizer? Oh yeah. So what? what? That's it, massive. It's ma well, I got the extended one because I. You know, oh, you want to make sure that you don't burn sure. your hands. Exactly. But what's cool? The handle can be any draft handle. It's uh, it's machined for uh, tap handles. That's so pretty cool. Any tap handle you want on it, and then for the wait, like I said, nobody knows what this is. So this is a caramelizer that you put in a campfire, and it's been designed to heat up to like exactly the right temperature with the type of metal they use and then the surface area and then you just plunge this into your beer and it caramelizes the sugars and changes the flavors um so i told you about this last time and it arrived i haven't used it yet i'm waiting until we can all sit around outside around an actual fire and do it together instead of 
sadly sitting by myself around a fire and caramelizing. I read a lighter. Yeah. You're just so. sitting in the living room with a lighter underneath it, like back yeah, warm it heating up. it up like some kind of junkie, just like sticking it in my beer. Someone drives by, like Adam has hit a low. Yeah. We need to call Adam. Adam has hit a low right now. He's he's lighting something on fire in his living room. Um, well, we still owe Caitlin, Cassie, and I a barbecue at your house. So just letting you know, it was like eight months when you said you were going to do it, and it's then true. or six months, and then the pandemic hit. So now it's yeah. just a shit show. So once um, this is done, we're going to have to have the biggest cookout of all time see we I mean once the spring comes though and it's like we can get back outside and hopefully some of these numbers drop again we can act a little bit like it was in august and still be yes. far enough away from each other and do this kind yep. of thing there was that bright moment in the summertime where the pot a hot was open at obc and you can drink beers outside that yep. we did feel a little bit more comfortable i feel like hopefully that will come around april or may and we can actually yep. do that so sometime by june we can actually get outside and do some things with people that's what I'm looking forward to. Until then, we have to sit in our living rooms uh, with our fake fireplaces on and our trees. And That's our why I got the extended handle was so that as soon as we can safely just be outside together, I can caramelize your beer from a safe distance. Are you going to come and do that as an as a extra cost at OBC? You just stand yeah, on the yeah. patio with your thing in the fire the whole time? And, oh, with my little, put, my little cup to put your money, put your dollar bill in, and I'll, I'll caramelize your beer. Your tubular? No, right. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about him he's 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 a rough moment right now um we, we pulled him out of his living room he was lighting it with a with a, with a um, lighter <laughs> just, just put a dollar in his cup i will say with going back to beer and you talking about that is there's two things one my friend's brewery andy gagan um he released a cool um baltic porter that was a barrel aged yeah. baltic porter a wax dip uh, it came out on, uh, I think it was Saturday or Sunday at um, Stoppers and, and Holden. But they make it traditionally make a year. I think they're one of the only breweries in this area that make a great winter beer with Icebreaker. Uh, that's yeah. the one that has the cinnamon yep. and the, the nutmeg yeah, and all that stuff in it. And it's become a cult, be a cult classic for them. Um, and it just came out this year. Uh, it's cool because it's one of those things, this cool look, of, look and visual aspect for Maine for Bangor, Maine, because it has the icebreaker, which is the, the, the boat that drives along the Penobscot River and breaks yep. the ice to make sure the, uh, the river's cleared up. Um, it has a little cool drawing of that or painting of that on the can, which is pretty cool. So if you're in the Bangor area or in Maine, really, because I bet you can get it all over the state, um, that's one of those ones. Again, and the cool thing about that one, I believe that's like high sevens. I'm not 100% sure on that, yep. but I believe it's not the 11% that you'd think of, like we talked about before. Um, so that might be actually cool. Um, it's called Penobscot Icebreaker. I'm gonna look at the icebreaker. Um, Gagan's untapped. That's where you look, right? After everything, 7.3. So that's see, that's the thing. It's not. It's half a percentage more than friggin' um, Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale. Um, and 30 IBUs. It's got. Ah, uh, it doesn't say in it. It just says winter ale. Keep you warm on a winter day. But that's I wanted to throw that one in there for sure because of the fact yeah. that it's a great local beer. Um, Gagans has been around a year and a half longer than Orono Brewing Company, so they're one of the they're honestly one of the originals in Bangor. Oh, <laughs> it's absolutely. like Sea Dog, and then like many, 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 many years later, or Sea Dog, and then maybe um, Black Bear. Yep. And then many, many, many years later all the rest of us and Gagans was the forefront of all the rest of us. They were one of the first of all the rest of us. They actually helped us move in our tanks to our original location. Yeah. They took a day off and they're brewing and they came over and moved the tanks in for OBC uh, back in 2014, which is crazy. But uh, Adam, guess what? You technically still work at Orono Brewing Company. We have a gift for you. You haven't picked it up yet. You got to, I know I got to get out, man. I haven't left the house in at least a year. It feels like I could leave it on a snowbank for you to pick up. It's just, you have to just come get it. No, nope, I'll come. I can it. also swing it by. You know, no. Wednesday they're doing delivery of beer, so you want to buy beer and just tell Caitlin she can bring it over to your house. That's what I should do. <laughs> uh, but they, uh, um, I was doing the thing, and like I was thinking to myself, it's crazy because this past year was your two year anniversary at Orange no. Company, and it's things of yesterday that I, we hired you. It was like it feel like yep. it was not that long ago that you became you came in the door and sat down. And I hey, it was, long it was cables two years and, in September. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And so uh, we miss you, obviously. You probably miss pouring beer, I'll tell you that much. 
I miss pouring beer. I miss, well, at this point I miss everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's why I joke with Annie, like just the thought of going and like working a bartending shift sounds like the absolute greatest thing in the world. Yes, but not all of us want that right now. I don't know if you saw exactly. the OBC Instagram on, on Saturday, uh, OBC Tasting Room Instagram. Um, Caitlin was um, sitting in a, a chair in front of the fireplace. That's about all she was doing. <laughs> That's what the world looks like right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, she actually shows up on time now, which is really weird because well, good. we're not needing her to show up on time right now. She shows up on time. Uh, she's actually gotten better than that. Since we came back from the, the shutdown back in the spring, She's been on time all the time. I think she's trying to make sure that she still has a job there. Um, it's crazy. We have six employees basically right now in the tasting room in the kitchen because of this, uh, just because of people have left yeah. and no one's been hired because of 2020. Uh, Jason's still there. Uh, Kyle's brother, Jason. Yep. You remember Kyle? His brother Jason's still there, but he's just taking the month off because we don't need him and he has schoolwork and family to hang out with. Yep. Um, but it's crazy, man. It's a, it's a, it's a, you wouldn't think, and you, you probably, when you were doing most bartending shifts at Orna Brewing Company, that you wouldn't think that you'd sit in your house one day and realize that you miss pouring beer for someone no. else, not just yourself. Like, you just wouldn't think that, like, when you have a vacation, you're like, God, thank God I'm gone. Now you're like, oh, I really miss just someone going, oh, I'll take a tubular. Cool. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I just keep thinking about, what it's going to be like when we can all go out and hang out again with like out even without thinking about being safe at all. It's going to be nuts. It's, it's um, pretty insane, honestly, because it's such a weird world that everything seems like you're an adult. So we've learned these things as we get older and every year is a new thing you can do or whatever. And then all of us were forbidden from doing that for many, 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 many months. And all of a sudden, we're all going to have to learn how to do that again. It's going to learn that's how like, to sit at a bar. It's going to learn how to like... The other day was like... She was like, I feel like I'm going to be so socially awkward. And, and I was like, I know. And the thing is like, we'll know. We'll know like, okay, we're vaccinated and we're safe. But like, it's going to take a while for like somebody to get close to me and me not be like, no. Like, and like someone reaches their hand out. I mean, I go, eh. Uh, I still will probably yeah. do that till probably 2023. Just letting everybody yeah. know. Likely won't shake your hand. And if I don't know you and where you've yeah. been, I probably won't hug you. It turns out I actually never liked touching you. So I'm okay with this. <laughs> so it's like, it's just one of those things that like people I know are going to get handshakes and hugs. People that like, if you're in the tasting room and I've known you like a couple of times, you've come in, don't that. even get near me. Like, don't like, I'm sorry. That. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take that vaccine in my shoulder. I'm ready for it. I want it tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be excited for it, but I'm just still not going to touch you. Sorry. Like it's not, it's, we're just going to take a break from that. So, but I think Christmas day again, cop out because we did ho- two holidays or the last two podcasts, drink what you want <laughs> is the biggest thing. Uh, I will do a little pitch. Um, if you listen into this in the morning on the 23rd, uh, you can go to ornobrewingcompany or ornobrewing.com slash to go and order beer up until two o'clock for delivery to your house in the greater Bang- greater Bangor area. Um, so order something fun, order everlasting farm or a Mexican blackbird stout, um, but drink what you want. But to round this up and like kind of finish this up right now, um, let's offer some beer suggestions. So I have, yeah. Bell's Christmas Ale. I don't. You can get that in Maine. So if you live in Maine, Bell's is distributed in Maine. I'm pretty sure you can get that. Uh, Gagan's Icebreaker again, like I mentioned before. Uh, you can definitely get Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale. I know. I just obviously just bought some. Um, ones that uh, Mexican Blackbird, like I mentioned before. But ones like Trogues. I don't know. If, I don't think Trogues is distributed in Maine. So I haven't have seen to go it. through. I think it's in Massachusetts for sure. Maybe New Hampshire. Uh, Anchor again, same thing because of their whole craft brewing boom and all that stuff. They're really spare, sparsely distributed. Uh, and obviously you can get 21st Amendment in New Hampshire. I know that for a fact, too. I don't know if you can get that anywhere else uh, in New England, but those are my go to uh, ones. But again, to me personally, Christmas Day is more of a celebration to the point where you crack open that special bottle, maybe you've reserved for a couple of years, or the bottle that you just have you bought a couple weeks ago, that double IPA. Um, pilot batch i got from um main beer company and that will be something that i'm opening it's that celebration of the day throughout the month drink whatever you want honestly <laughs> it's just yeah. a stupid cop out now we we, we enticed you to say top christmas beers but like drink what you want <laughs> exactly 
But no, I think you're right though. But I mean, yeah. But do your special beers. Like I said, for me, it's like I know you can get St. Bernardus around here. Um, Delirium Noel. I know you can get that around here. So I would say for me, like get your one special bottle of like a nice Belgian Christmas ale and save it till the end of the day because it'll it'll yes. end your day. Stay home. Was it another Stay one? Stay home, be safe, wear a mask, drink your beer and um I, I haven't told Adam this yet, but I would love to do let's do New England style IPAs next time. Like let's let's was, do something that's a little yep. bit more um I was just getting ready to, to ask home. you. Yeah, what should we do and like so that there's a focus on because next time like we can you and I have talked about this, but yes. we can talk a little bit about like the history of that beer and kind of how it's developed regionally and with different breweries and yeah. All right, so New England style IPAs. I think New England style would be fun, and honestly, we could then go to the next episode, do West Coast, do like a, a, a yep. more what the what the brewing industry has kind of gone to in the East Coast, to what it came from, and um, you know, it's a little bit backwards than someone would normally do. Like this is the original Sierra Nevada, Sam Adams, those places to New England style IPAs. But New England style IPAs is the most popular brew across this country right now, I would think. And I think we should just go go with that and pick some beers, yeah, and um, I mean, it's and very easy for us to get some. We're in so. New England, so it yeah. only makes sense. But I will say, if I have to one beer to recommend for the Christmas season, I will say Celebration Ale. If you're an IPA fan, it's gonna be a West Coast. It's gonna be more bitter than your normal, like I said, New England style IPAs. It is not spiced. It is a wet hop beer. Yep. Uh, Sierra Nevada brews with whole cone hops as a whole, but this is a wet hop whole cone hop. Uh, beer available on a six pack you can get it at damon's and bangor um this is a 2020 edition obviously it says on the neck um but that's what i would recommend if you had one beer to pick um and adam seems like he's in somewhat of an agreement it seems like a all-around great beer to drink during it is yep and if you like i said and i'll go with for mine if you want that heavy beer get saint bernardus Mm -hmm. so awesome adam um well i am not going to tell you my location because Yep. Uh, I'm hanging out with, uh, yeah, with some other, uh, wanted people in the United States. Uh, but we'll be back. This is the, actually the last episode of 2020. Hey. Um, Adam's on it for that. This is the last episode of what I'm calling season two. Uh, season three will come back in July, uh, January, hoping nice. some cool new guests. Uh, I have some feelers out there for sure. Um, some cool new things that might happen. Uh, I talked to Ben. I'll Spreg make a and- call. I'll get John Favre for your, yeah, see, uh, there you go. See, I did try. So my buddy, um, I, I used to cover the MMA in Massachusetts. Um, my buddy Calvin Cater is fighting in January on the UFC. He's a UFC fighter. He's yep. fighting main card against like a, a, Max Holloway, which is a legitimate fight. Like this is the kind of fight that if he wins this fight, he'll get a championship fight. Yep. So it's going to be a huge fight. So I've been reaching out to his management to try to see if I can get him on because I used to cover his like small things. Sure, uh, sure. It's a little harder right now because everybody wants to talk to him. So that's hoping for January. We'll see. Um, but otherwise, we're going to grab some other people. We're going to grab people from all over New England. I've got some friends that are old connections that work for the Carolina, Pan- uh, Her- Carolina Hurricanes. I've got connections to the guys that work at Arizona Coyotes. Nice. Uh, my buddy is the um, president of the uh, Fort Wayne Mad Ants, which is an NBA G League team. So you get some sports-related things that I want to yeah. bring into next season, so which is pretty cool. But then we'll obviously have ba- Adam back on for a happy hour, happy hour. We've got um, uh, Paul Eaton coming back on for comic book talking, and uh, Adam, or sorry, Adam. Uh, now I'm had two beers in, and I can't think. Josh from Queen City Cinema Club talking yeah. some movie stuff too. So, uh, but until then. Adam, so good to see you, or Always. see you. Uh, great to have a beer with you, even though we can't physically be in person. So we'll see you in January. You right? will. I'll, well, you might, maybe you'll see me before then. Maybe I'll swing by and grab my, my surprise. If you don't want to swing by, just let me know. I can leave it on your doorstep. No, I'll swing by. I'm, I'm fine. I'll mask up. <laughs> mask up. Stay home. Merry Christmas, yes. everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, Adam. See you, see you man. man.